in the, at the Vision and Media Lab at Simon Fraser University, uh, and and it's an interesting field, but a field that we're just kind of getting our feet wet in. It's, it's hard right. to do. That's it's right. computer vision. That's right. Recognizing humans, recognizing what they're doing. That's right. So computer vision is all about sort of understanding images and video. Right. And the particular thing I work on is, as you said, a human activity recognition. I want to be able to understand an image or a video of people, figure out where are all the people and what are they doing. It's funny because this is something a two or three year old can do like that in right. instantly. And it's, it turns out to be a difficult thing. Why is it so hard for a computer to do? Why is it so hard? Well, it's there's just so much variation in how people appear. Right. So look at all the clothing of me versus you. Right. Well, we're both wearing blue shirts. Mine's got some stripes on it. I've got dark hair. You've got light hair. Our body shapes are a little bit different, perhaps. Right. And so it's difficult to build that into a computer to understand that we're both people. And also, we may do actions different ways. Somehow, in the human brain, we're able to abstract a person Right. That can, so that we can kind of see the differences and still know it's a person. But that's, the computer is very that's concrete. Right. It's very difficult for the computer to learn how to understand that these are all different people, even though they may appear to be different. How do you attack a problem like this? Is it brute force? Is it making the computer smarter? Uh, it's a little bit of both ends. So you sort of try to brute force, get lots and lots of data. So right. these days, video and images are cheap. Everyone's got digital cameras, video cameras. You can collect a large number of videos of different people to get some variation in it. And then we also try to, as computer scientists, we try to use some intuition about what we think people are doing. Right. So we can study how the human brain works and try to get some feeling for how, as a person, we might understand or interpret images of oh, people. Oh, very, very interesting. So, so you collect a lot of images, you try to teach the computer, but you also, just like the computer playing chess, you, you, right. you showed a lot of positions, but you also try to teach it a little bit about what a position right. means. So more about what you might call intelligence. Right, right. right. Well, let's take a look at the, some of right. the work you're doing. Yeah, here. so there are a lot of applications for this uh, human activity recognition. One of them is in human-computer interaction, where you might want to have more natural ways of interacting with your computer. So this video right here shows a, a, a video of a hand being tracked. So what mm -hmm. we're doing is we're figuring out what the position of the hand is in this cluttered background. It's and doing a good job. do the shape of it so it'll, he'll open up his hand and we'll be able to track right. that. So you'd be able to use this for interesting things such as perhaps people are familiar with the Sony iToy. Mm -hmm. This is a little device you could up to your PlayStation 2 and you could interact with the computer game by waving your hands. It, works pretty, well it works pretty well. It's cool stuff and this, and this is one of the first sort of mass market devices which people could interact with. But it's still pretty primitive in what it can understand. It can right. just sort of course motion in one area of the course, screen. Yeah. But this, something like this more detailed where you could actually figure out where the hand is and what gesture you're making might allow you to have more interesting games. That's the first step to a Tom Cruise mission kind of uh, interface where he was throwing the things around. And, That's right, and yeah. grabbing things yeah. and seeing. Yeah. And so a step up from this in complexity is actually tracking the whole body. So this video right here shows a speed skater and we're actually tracking the whole skeleton of the person. Figuring out where is the wrist, wow. where is the elbow, where is the shoulder. Now did you have to put dots on him for uh, you to be able to do that or that's right. So th this process involves a couple of stages. One is getting a lot of data of sort of examples of different people and mm -hmm. in different poses and trying to match them to the, the, the video that we see right mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. what kind of, so th yeah. this would be collecting information then, at this right. point. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Right. And so not only can we sort of collect all this information and figure out what the person's up to, so these can allow us to have these sort of more natural interfaces to the computer. Right. Um, there's another application domain for this sort of uh, thing, and it's, it can be viewed as a little bit scary. So there's sort of these big brother surveillance applications. Well, security. security I mean, is, is, is this guy uh, supposed to be here or not supposed to be right. here? Is he doing something he's supposed to do or not? That's right. And it's a big problem that you have many, many video cameras set up all over the world, and they're recording footage 24 hours a day. Right. And you might want to figure out what these people are up to. First, where are they and what are right. they doing? Right. And so if you could do that with a computer system, it could greatly reduce the amount of manual labor. Yeah, right now, people do. have to watch those That's images. Right. Yeah. Right. And so, for example, here's another video of us um, interpreting what somebody is doing automatically. So right here, this shows a woman playing tennis, and at the <laughs> bottom here, we have these six bars which indicate how likely it is that we think that she's performing different actions. And a computer is doing this decide yeah. deciding. Completely automatically. So right now, she's definitely standing still, maybe moving left slowly a little bit. Now she's you swinging You can tell it's racket. when it's swinging. That's yeah. amazing. And so this is all done by analyzing the pattern of motion, right. and so we've trained the system up to, to show it what does it look like when a person swings her tennis racket. Is part of the problem that the brain works so differently than our computers? Yeah, I really don't know, know one to get into issues of sort of, to me it's enough to build a computer system that can mimic the behaviors of the, the human brain. So if we can build a, a computer vision system that can perform as well as a person at this right. task, then we've done our job. Right. Whether or not it's doing it in the same fashion as a, as a human brain is a completely different issue. Very interesting. It's complicated. It's complicated. I know Jeff Hawkins has talked a lot about this. He's, yeah. he's of the opinion that if you're going to use, uh, do something like this, you have to build something that looks, works more like a brain than like a, our computers. Yeah, right? so I'm really not too sold on that idea. You're not I mean, in that it, I'm 
not in that camp. I think it's very interesting to understand how the human brain works, right. but perhaps that's a separate problem. One could view computer vision as a sort of an engineering problem where we're just trying to get a solution. Right. right? And there's a good analogy between um, planes, for example. When people first try to build airplanes, flap. things that flap their wings, right? right? You see birds that's flying. That's how nature that's, did that's it. That's right. Yeah. And then nowadays, you wouldn't do that. You'd no. go and you'd get wings and jet engines, right. and you'd fly a plane very, very quickly. Right. So it's not clear to me that it's necessarily the case you should mimic. Just because nature did it that way. That's right. Although nature's doing a better job. Quite it's clearly, winning right yeah. now. <laughs> the two-year-old child is still far better than uh, my computer, so I think that we do have some more. Let's see some more. Here. Let's see some more. This right. is synthesizing right. novel videos. So now, this is a cool thing. So I was saying there's some scary security applications, but there's a lot of fun stuff you can do with this. So here what we've done is we've taken this video of this person playing tennis, right. and now at the bottom, we're actually controlling what she does. Are so you? this is, in fact, a synthetic video. She didn't actually do that. We just made her perform oh the action you wanted to, okay? And so another example of this is this video of, we're gonna show me in the World Cup. So okay. the story here is that I love soccer, okay? I'm, I really, okay. really am an avid soccer player, yeah. but I'm really not that good, okay? okay? So instead of I did, I studied computer vision for 10 years, spent a lot of time. You should have played gonna, more soccer. That's, I should have played more soccer, perhaps. Maybe I just find it, so I can't do it. Now I'm gonna put myself in the World Cup. So here's a video of the World Cup. Here's a person up here that we're tracking up on the top, yeah. and in the middle shows finding the frame of my video, which is most similar to that guy Trying to there. match you up. Yeah. So Finding, but because we and now we've put doing, Greg in the World Cup. Yeah, I rub that guy up on top and put me in his place. <laughs> it's all done because we can figure out what the person's doing. But right there'll there. be a huge market for this down the road. I hope so. Yeah. yeah. So that's that's one even of in just in motion pictures and entertainment. That's right. So you yeah. could put in extras into movies right. or have replacing actors put, and putting put yourself into games. Gary Cooper forth. could do my job right here. Yeah, you know? could be careful. Put some people out of business. <laughs> I don't know. Out of business. <laughs> Very interesting stuff. Greg Mori is a professor of vision uh, at the Vision and Media Lab at the Simon. Fraser University and boy this is fascinating is there somewhere you would recommend people go to learn more about this Definitely. you should come check out our webpage we've got all these videos and much more information if you really want to know the nitty-gritty details yeah. there's a yeah. high-level overview but if you want to know how we do some of this stuff it can get pretty technical but it's interesting oh I think it's, it's absolutely fascinating